In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Uh, so here's what we do in this episode. We open up with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about studies. We mention our sponsors. We talk about current events. Generally, you just have a lot of fun. That took about 45 minutes in this episode. After that, we answered the fitness and nutrition and health questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of the whole episode. So if you want to fast forward, rewind, whatever, find your favorite spot, you can do that. So we open up by talking about a new company we're working with, Public Goods. Now, Public Goods provides uh, some of the best sustainable uh, products you can buy anywhere. Good for the environment, uh, good for your skin, good for your clothes. You can buy soaps, you can buy detergents. Every uh, household item you can think of. They have uh, organic feminine products. Uh, they're very inexpensive. Um, they have this model where you could buy certain products and then you only have to buy refills, so there's less, less packaging waste. This also saves you money. In fact, uh, Adam was talking about how uh, you could buy razors on there for a dollar each made with bamboo handles. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, but we just started working with this company and we have a crazy hookup. In fact, we had to double check this to make sure that it was accurate. So here's what you get when you sign up with the Mind Pump hookup. You're going to get $15 off your first order with no minimum purchase. In other words, you could sign up, get $15 worth of free stuff, literally the first time, never have to do anything again. Say Here, what? Here's what you do. Go to publicgoods.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump at checkout. Then we talked about the gig economy. Uh, we have some family members that are taking advantage of the current situation, making some money because a lot of people are door dashing right now. Then we talked about the camaraderie in gyms, some of the best you'll find anywhere, no joke, especially the hardcore gyms. Then we talked about black market gyms. That led us to talk about why gyms are closing. Ooh, speak easy gyms. And how a lot of gyms might be opening up anyway. Sorry, Gavin Newsom. Then we talked about not, one of our sorry. favorite post-workout meals. No, it's not a protein shake. It's cereal. It's the cereal. It's like the cereal you had when you were a kid. Mm. Tastes amazing. They actually have a flavor that's blueberry. Another one, birthday cake. The company, Magic Spoon. Now, this cereal is made with whey protein and milk protein, has no sugar, still delicious. It's amazing. Uh, here's your hookup. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get an automatic mind pump discount, or you could just use the code mind pump. Uh, then we talked about, uh, let's see what, then we talked about Adam's coin percentage correction. He messed up again. No big deal. Uh, <laughs> Justin brought up a Japanese company that is allowing fans to cheer for their favorite teams from home. That might be something that goes big. You suck. I talked about cannabinoid research. Uh, there's some breakthroughs in cannabinoid science. These are the molecules found in the marijuana plant. We talked about the hypothalamus in women who take birth control. Apparently, scientists are finding that uh, chronic use of birth control or consistent use shrinks the hypothalamus. Then we talked about a company who gets lost luggage and sells it, and apparently they're the only company in the world that does this. I talked about my gun scare at the airport when I was 12 years old. Uh, Justin brought up uh, sunflower selfies. And then we got into the fitness questions. Mm. Here's the first one. The first, this person says, "Look, uh, I'm not good at pull-ups. What can I do?" The next question, pull-ups. This person is bored with bicep training. Um, weird, I know. Bicep training's fun, whatever. But they want to know what they can do because it's so boring. So we give some other bicep exercises that might be more fun. The third question, this person wants to know how to use resistance bands appropriately for best results. Resistance bands can seriously augment your workout for good results. So you might want to listen to that part of the episode. And the final question, this person says, what are the best things I can do to build bone strength and health? Also, this month, all month long, MAPS Strong is 50% off. Now, MAPS Strong is a workout program that is inspired by strongmen. It is designed to build muscle speed up the metabolism, and help people also to burn body fat. It's a very popular program among people who want to develop their posterior chain, their back, their butt, and their hamstrings. Also, if you like workouts that have both traditional and non-traditional exercises, you're going to love this program. There's a lot of new stuff in it. Anyhow, here's how you get the half off. Go to mapsstrong.com. 
maps.com. That's M A P S S T R O N G.com. And use the code STRONG50. That's S T R O N G 50, no space for the discount. Super excited, right? Um, always get excited when da, we da, 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 nah. find a new a new company. Yeah, I can uh, tell you're excited. <laughs> does that not sound? Like, I'm really, looking at you. Does that not sound super excited? Uh, uh, no. I am super duper excited. So tended out right now? No, 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 no. We whoa, uh, whoa there, just, sorry. I feel like that we we've we've had a, a need for a couple years now, uh, at least a year and a half, two years now, uh, for a brand that supplies uh, things like this. Um, and so, uh, this was something that I believe Rachel <clears throat> came across them first, maybe about six months ago, reached out, we were back and forth, uh, with the company and a bunch of phone calls and then talking about things and just like we'd normally do courting somebody and finally sealed everything last month and officially launching today, uh, our partnership with, uh, public goods. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're old school. We don't date, we court. Yeah, mm, right. yeah. Yeah. They're, cr- they're, uh, their, their company's crushing and they're going to keep crushing. I, you know what I like about what they do? So they are they really, really do emphasize eco-friendly, um, you know, uh, not harsh chemicals type products. Um, and one of the things I like to do is they, they'll, you'll buy a product. That'll be the container for the product. Then you just buy refill bags. Right. Yeah. So it's less waste uh, for the environment. And the prices, I think because of that, are really low because the the, the expensive packaging is what you get when you get the initial product or whatever. Everything else is refill. I really right. like that model. It's super simplistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even when the branding, you kind of see that. I just love And they have so many different options for things in the kitchen and cleaning products and things like that. Like uh, just going and overhauling my entire kitchen with spices and all that, that definitely going to hit that up. Yeah. Didn't you say that their razors were really good? Their razor blades are a dollar, dude. Yeah. Uh, that, that, and so Dollar Shave Club too, by the way, isn't a dollar. So uh, not a lot of people know that or not, right? It's like no, it's, it's like think, fifteen bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. Which what? still, Whoa, that's a big difference. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's. But I, it, I've, I've, I was doing that before. Yeah. Wait, they they're called, wait. Hold on a second. You didn't know that? No, wait. It's, it says Dollar Shave Club. It's well, fifteen dollars. Once you start getting like yeah, uh, if you the, actually the, the actual razor you want. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah wow. it starts going up in price. And then it, and then I think that actually like I think the 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 base model is like seven dollars for like the little handle and then the blade actually plays oh, worth okay. that. Yeah. So and these yeah. were these ones were public goods were like bamboo handle and the whole deal. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, no. So I'm excited. I just ordered a dad's kit, which is which comes with all this like all the bathroom accessories and uh, in there is the razor. So I'm really excited to try that because t- t- that alone for me. I mean, dude, you know how much replacement blades are. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys use. Do you guys use a razor? I don't yeah. use a razor anymore. You use a electric. Yeah, I just if I'll trim the beard every once in a while, I but just, like Norelco, like old school. No, like no, 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 no. Just I tr- just keep it like a beard. Oh, you know what I mean? like with the yeah, yeah like because, scissors. Yeah, I, I shaved a couple times with a razor, and Jessica was like, "Don't, don't. Yeah, let's do not that do that anymore. Yeah. You yeah. you razor, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I razor Especially too. Especially my neck. Yeah, I yeah, I have I to do. It. You don't have to, you don't line up like that. No, no. I, I mean, I'll do it down here, but like you know, Justin's beard connects to his chest hair. <laughs> so he has to. <laughs> he's got to find. He's got to go down the path. He's got to mow the lawn. He's got to mow the lawn. He has to make it. He has to separate. Reynolds over here. It's the trail to ecstasy. Are you the Are you the hairiest of all of us? I know, dude. I got no hair. You're the hairiest of all of us, though. No. No way. That's 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 not factual. You don't think so? I not think, at all. I thought you were. My arm hair no. is very misleading, yeah. dude. I'm not the hair. Doug definitely. I literally, is. He's got, Doug's like smoother than yeah. a baby's ass. Yeah, yeah. Doug's yeah. like a he's like a seal. He's like a hairless chimp. He's like <laughs> that's what he's, he's like saying. a dolphin. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, just oh, oh. smooth. <laughs> yeah. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth. Hey, like that. How about too the the public goods almonds, bro? So yeah, those are good. Dude. I you know hey. I loved you, skinny dipped. Yeah. You were you, you were, were fun. Yeah, you were fun. Yeah, you were but, fun. Uh, you were cute. But you were new girl. You were cute. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. She's tasty. These yeah. are on another level. <laughs> They're way hotter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is on Dude, another level are. right here. Dude, uh, you know what? The, here's another thing, too, to pay attention to. I talked about this once on the podcast. This is something I was not aware of. Uh, feminine products, right? Like tampons and, and, and pads and that kind of stuff. Yeah. They are not regulated the same way as like food products, obviously, because you don't eat them. However, you do put them inside your body, right? And yeah. they do contain the like the the cotton and the and the stuff that that makes up these products are often soaked in chemicals. Like Jolene Brighton talks about this all the time. She crazy. does, and when when you put something inside your body, you still do absorb 
some of the chemicals and in, in stuff in there. And the public goods, they have the organic uh, products, organic feminine hygiene products. I know. It's awesome. You know, yeah, one of the things that I had to get clear, I was, we, when we were going back and we were first negotiating the deal, the offer that they make for our listeners, I had to like go back like three different times and make make this clear. So wait a second, you mean to tell me that basically they, they can order something for free? Like and there's no no bells, whistles, that doesn't tie them Wait, wait, in. what do you mean? So they have, what is it, up to $15, Doug, is what they can spend? Yes. So they get a, they get a $15 uh, you know, voucher, basically, towards any of the products, and you could technically buy something for $15. Oh, Ooh. wow. So, I mean, I, I, you can go on there. So you could sign up, Try yeah, get fifteen dollars worth of free stuff. Yeah, oh, and, wow. and try the product or try something that you this want. It's like an initial offering to get yeah. You in. Yeah, yeah. Membership. Are you required to buy anything else after? No, that's why it's that's huh. like it's so it's, it's kind talk of a no the, brainer. I'll talk to the marketing department. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys sure this? You know, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, the, I mean, it just comes. You yeah. got to be pretty confident in yeah, what, what you're is. delivering. That's if what it is. if you know, because then you know the leads are worth it, right? That just that if they can get everybody in, they know a, a large enough percentage of these people will love the product think, and continue buying. I think because of the current state of the way things are going, yeah. anyway, I think companies like this are positioned so well because. Going to the store right now is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Places are still, are we open? Are we shut down? What's going on? Whatever. Um, it's obviously delivered to your door. It's clean. And uh, it's all the common household items you need. So, you know, it'd be much more convenient to do it this way. Yeah. You know, we did. We did one of those, uh, what is it called when you, that, that shopping cart thing that you go online, order your groceries? Instacart. Okay. We've done it now several times. We have yet to get exactly what we ordered. Oh, really? Never. Comes all random? Never. We'll be like organic berries. Yeah, because if, if they'll, it's out, they'll, they'll cucumber. If it's, if it's, uh-huh. Oh, really? So if <laughs> like it's way out, different. If it's out, then they they won't Oops. have it. Right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. No, no. It's like I want this, not whatever you think I want. <laughs> it's not yeah. supposed to work that <laughs> way. Oh, this is. No, a we don't have this. I'll give you one of these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he yeah. wants Here's an eggplant. It's still yeah. a vegetable. You know what I mean? Let's just give you. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's no eggs. Here's a chicken that makes it. Well, egg. you know what happened to Katrina yesterday? It's that like the so box. we used Instacart like on on the daily, like literally. So yesterday, yes, this is day before yesterday. She ordered and um, uh, she put banana right on uh, like like her fruit that she on the list and they like literally bought brought one banana you know <laughs> just one yeah because you like it's like fuck you gotta you sp- you yeah, say yeah, bananas yeah you, not, the, she didn't not a bunch of bananas yeah because she you know because you you send over a list yeah. like that right and when you send the list over she you know just real quick she's writing it all writing it all out banana right. And because she didn't put bananas, right, or a bundle of bananas, wow, like they, they, be real specific. Yeah, she, yeah, she gets. We get our order, and there's like one I want banana. Eggs, yeah, it's two. Yeah, yeah. 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 You just said eggs. You need yeah. to say how much multiple is multiple? How much is one banana? I, I don't know what we paid for. I yeah. don't remember. It's like thirty. What fifty cents? So cents? my my brother just. Station. So my little brother who just moved back uh, from. Um, uh, living out in Hawaii. Oh yeah, how was that for him? By the way, uh, not so great. Yeah, yeah. actually, he yeah, a, yeah. So was he, he living was, on the beach or something? No, he was living out of a out of a uh, like one of them Volkswagen type vans for a minute there, dude. Wow. My, my, yeah, we we couldn't be. My brother and I couldn't be uh, further from different. Like when it comes That's to like the that. surfer yeah. life. Yeah, because you would live in a Chevy, not a Volkswagen. <laughs> <That was laughs> Stupid. Wrong. No, I'm sorry. I, would, I just he's he did that. Like he he uh, you know lived in Colorado, like tent life for a while. He did. Uh, he lived up in Truckee, Tahoe area for a while. Like so, he's he's like a, what are they a nomad, right? Like mm. he's just what wherever type of deal. Where, but he, and he's young, so and he's not married, doesn't have kids, and so I always I encourage it. I always tell him, I say, hey man, I went the other route, so I'm not saying my way was better. Mm-hmm. I tied myself to a mortgage by the time I was 21. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going nowhere after that shit. So. You know, I used to be a little envious of my two little brothers who have this kind of a uh, you know personality where they are just you know travelers and they don't need much. And so I've been you know I've always encouraged that for him. Hey, dude, do it now while you're young when you can. Mm. But he's now kind of reaching that age, right? He's getting closer to thirty, mm. and he's like, I really need to get my shit together and like find something to do. And he's he's been asking me about coming out to the Bay Area, and I said, Yeah, dude. I, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of opportunity now. There's it's really expensive to get started here. And I suggested, I said, you know what, what's cool about being out here and you can come visit me and, and do this and, and set your own schedule is, you know, sign up for Instacart, DoorDash, Uber, all those things and, you know, hustle. And then if you can find like, I said, I think in a perfect world, I just saw the Home Depot was uh, offering jobs as like, if you get like a little steady 25 to 30 hours at Home Depot where you have like a set schedule, like in the morning or something. And then when you want to get crazy and hustle, you hustle Instacart mm-hmm. and and DoorDash. So he's been uh, he's been doing this for like the last two weeks, 
And dude, they man, you can make some fucking money mm-hmm. doing do- DoorDash, dude. I really? mean, he, especially yeah, right now. That's oh, great, bro. He's been screenshotting me like what he's making, and he's like, he's like, bro, he's all. I've made more in the last five days than I would a two week paycheck working at the hardware store that I was working before. Oh wow, yeah. So and it's all you know. It is at his convenience. Like he wants to work late night. He works late night. He wants to work mm. through the day. He works through the day. He wants to sleep in and then start late. He can do it. Do whatever. Such a yeah. It's such a cool time. It is, but you for know, that type of well, stuff. The gig economy itself is a really cool option. Yeah, I you, wish that existed when I was a kid. Yeah, but you know that sixteen. You know those jobs are th- being threatened right now, though, right? Because they passed uh, yeah, uh, yeah. laws that said that they can't be contractors or whatever. And yeah, thanks for looking out for us, government. Yeah. <laughs> We yeah. appreciate all of your efforts so far. So that's just that's only Uber though, right? It's not all of them. It's not DoorDash and uh, um, I think they're all going to be threatened by it and have to figure out ways to maintain, you know, con- continue doing what they're doing. Hmm. Really? I, yeah. Yeah, because I, I know that you if you I don't remember exactly what it was. Look that but, up, Doug. I want to hear about that. That's yeah. a bunch of bullshit. I heard that. I remember they it's were trying stupid to stupid because there's so many people who no, benefit it, from the flexibility. It would be the, you, you right. know what's funny? It's always the wrong people who have no fucking clue that are like voting for that or rooting for that. They yeah. think like it's gonna be it's like the same people that I feel like that like root for minimum wage to go up, but mm-hmm. don't actually understand economics and like yeah. what that actually really does. Like yeah, yeah we should move Minimum wage up to twenty five dollars yeah. or forty dollars. Okay, nobody, well, what, yeah. What about everybody else who can't make that kind of money, or people that employ people that can't pay someone that money? What that usually, actually does? Usually, what it is is they just you don't have the skills uh, or the experience to that where someone's going to want to pay you that much, so you just become unemployable. Yeah. yeah. At that point, yeah. No, I the gig well, yeah, economy is interesting. That's actually that's actually one of the reasons why it's the the biggest job growth has come from. Mm-hmm. companies like that. And I know a lot of people who do those types of jobs on the side and they love the flexibility oh, yeah. of being able to do whatever they do. Well, think about this. I mean, he's, I told you how much he's making good money, right? He, was, he, he made a couple thousand dollars this week. And I'm like, yeah, wow, that's great. I know. I'm like, that's big money, dude. I mean, it was seven days of working straight, right? So there was a lot of, it was, he was grinding. Yeah, but that's his choice. Right, you right. Know, how many jobs can you go to and say, hey, I want to work every day so I can make this? And they'll say, sorry. Yeah. yeah. We can't do and, that. And I mean, if he wants to work, a, it, here's, here's me. So I was, and I think you guys were both this way. I know you, Sal, said this. We shared this, that we were, when I, when I got into 24, one of the things that I guess this dates us to, right? This is like before a lot of time in labor laws. They told me like, they said uh, you could work as much as you want because mm, your salary. You know, because you you were still hourly, but they they didn't have time and labor laws back oh, then. This was right. that's how far back yeah, we go. Yeah. And they told me as a trainer that you know, hey, if you want to work the floor and hustle and find new clients and do all that. Now it was a minimum wage I was getting paid for that, and then I got paid a, a higher rate. So funny. But for me, I mean, minimum wage for me in the Bay Area was more than what I was making as a kid in high school. So I was like. Wait, as much as I want to work? Not only yeah. that, but you're 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 building your business. You're trying to get Yeah. Clients. So to me it was like, yeah. okay, you're gonna pay me to try and go get and build my own yeah, business. Yeah, build my company or build you know, I'm working yeah. for them, but it's like building your own business. I used to do that in the restaurant industry. Oh. I'd just take people's shifts because everybody was always trying to get out of their shift and, and go do something or go to the ball game or whatever. I'm like, give me your shift. And so I would end up working like two, three, four shifts some days just because I'm like, dude, this is my money. first my very first deal I made eight hundred dollars right off of a single pop I sold a personal training it was the very first person I ever saw and it was a girl at 5 a.m a waitress I took mm-hmm. and it was because of a trainer I was brand new I was like I'll take everything yeah, I'll I work did, whenever I did yeah. the same thing that yeah. was me and yeah, so yep. you know all the veteran trainers thought they were being all clever and shit and being like oh hey the new dumb guy yeah. will fucking work whenever let's, load him let's give him all bullshit. the garbage fucking yeah. leads right so he gives me a you know, a waitress. I think she was 19 years old, but hey, she was hustling and on her, and she wanted to fucking lose 15 pounds. Yeah. I took her through a fitness appointment, sold her a ton of training, and she was able to put at least half of it down and make payments on it, which we could do that back then. Mm-hmm. It was an $800 rip for me, and I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning to see her. And he gave it to me, and he comes into work at like nine o'clock, and he sees in the SMR right. So yeah, you've she, already got the that. I already got the yeah. sale. He was all pissed. Well, I mean, you want to know what my schedule looked like when I first became a trainer? No, this is no joke. I would get in at eight a.m. I would work uh, with clients. You, most of them back to back. Oftentimes, you'd have a block of of right. time in between. This is when I'd work out. But I was there from 8 a.m. till about 8 p.m. I would go home. This is no joke. I would go home, eat dinner, go to bed, wake up, come back, train a client at 3 a.m. Remember, this was 24-hour fitness. It was open 24 hours. Yeah. Then I'd train the client at 3 a.m., go back home, go back to bed sometimes, and then come back to work. And the reason why is because this person said, I want to buy training, 
but uh, no trainers want to train me at three o'clock in the morning. Well, yeah. I'm a new trainer, so I'm like, let's do this. Well, yeah, pay me. I'll train you at any time you want to come in. Yeah, let's do. Th- now, here's the thing: she I took a few of those. They ended up being very consistent <laughs> clients. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After a while, and then you got to figure it out. You start trying to talk them out of it. Yeah. Like, hey, why don't we do that? Well, that you know, you know, cortisol levels are highest at yeah. three a.m. Yeah. You might want to train when you're to stop. That's why my <laughs> schedule ended up being that way. Is what you start to find out as a trainer is the people that get up that early and come to personal training. Man, those are the most. They're, con- they're the most serious people. It's uh, the clients. You're actually were, right. Yeah. Oh, they're. The, I mean, if you if you have the discipline the to yeah get up at five o'clock in the morning to get your workout in, and you're going to pay someone like. Those people ain't missing. They you know, never. I rarely ever had somebody flake on me early, early no, in the morning. No, it was always post. No, there's work. an interesting culture in the gym. Uh, you know, when when you run gyms, you can see trends once you've been there for long enough or whatever. The most consistent members, the ones you can count on, they're going to show up. The same crowd all the time. Early morning. Yep. Early, early morning. Five, six a.m. It's the same people in the gym working out. They're the most consistent. They're never going to stop. Those after work hours, those after work primetime hours, that's where you get the yeah, huge- It gets a little flaky. Yeah, where they, you know, it's, here's another part of the culture. It's funny. I was walking with uh, Jessica this morning. We did a morning walk. And as we're walking, this guy comes out, big dude, and he's washing his his truck. And he, you know, he looks at me and, you know, I say hi to him and whatever. And he goes, oh man, he goes, you got a, you got a gym in your garage, don't you? Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do. And he goes, man, it sucks. He goes, they open the gyms for one day. Yeah. Then they close them. He goes, I went to go lift weights. Now they're closed. He goes, this totally sucks. He's like, I, I'm going to try and put a gym in my garage. So we start talking. Big dude, right? Start talking back and forth. And then we leave. Real nice guy. And I told Jessica, I said, you know, that it's funny. There's this camaraderie between people who work out in the gym that supersedes all other differences. I've noticed this in every gym I've ever worked out in or worked in, especially the hardcore gyms. The more hardcore the gym, the more everybody treats each other with respect and kindness, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah. There's a reason for that. There's one thing for sure, okay? No matter uh, what color, what language you speak, what age you are, that you have in com- that we all have in common. You're, you're somewhat growth-minded. Yeah. You care about bettering yourself, and and, right? and you're so and you're, you all other things could have be different, but you there's at least that's a guarantee because if you're making the effort to go to a gym and mm-hmm. lift things up and run on treadmills and do things like that, that there's it's n- admirable. Yeah, there's there you, know, you, you expect it. you you are doing it with the intentions of of bettering who you are. That's right. So you so it's and now here's the thing. I've had people ask me this question: Are people who are growth minded drawn to working out? Or does exercise help grow mm. or and shape a growth-minded mm. in, uh, you know, person? Chicken or the I think I think it's both. I honestly well I think there's a little bit of both, but I think a large part of and I've only because I've experienced this training uh, lots of people when you do it for a long time and you do it for the right reasons, it does build the skill of discipline and it does change your perception of how much power and control you have over yourself and your attitude and stuff like that. So you're right. It's a lot of growth-minded people. And it's also a lot of people willing <clears throat> to work to improve themselves. One of the I, I remember as a kid, I was uh, – see, the first time I really worked out in a gym, I was 15 or 16. I want to say 16. Um, and then when I turned 17, uh, you know, I had my driver's license, and I actually uh, – there was a, a world's gym that was far away. It was like 40 minutes away. But that's World Gym, and the only gym I was going to at the time was 24 Hour Fitness. I'm like, I want to go to a hardcore gym to see what it's all about. Mm-hmm. So I drove all the way to this World Gym that was like, it was like power lifters. Did and Dave Draper body- own it? No, I think oh, that's the one in I Santa Cruz. The one in Sa- yeah, yeah, that yeah. He owned. Yeah, so this was like bodybuilders and power lifters, and yeah. like it, it was like a it was a dungeon of weights. And I remember going in there, and I'm very comfortable in gyms even at that age, but I was still a little intimidated because there were all these monsters working out or whatever. And I remember how like cool they were to me, you know. If I if I was looking at a machine, hey, do you want me to try to use that, or do you need a spot, or hey, good job, people giving me fist bumps in the gym. I saw a lady working out in there; they were treating her the same way. That was my first experience with the 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 camaraderie that you experience in gyms. And I would communicate this to my to clients, especially female clients who were intimidated by the gym. And I remember telling them. The big scary people in the gym, the guy, the, the guys and girls who look super hardcore, they're the ones most willing to help you oh, yeah. and answer questions. The biggest teddy big bears, te- exactly. Yes, oh, yeah, I know they're screaming over there with the and they're dropping the hundred twenty pound dumbbells and whatever. But trust me, if you have a question and you ask them, 
They'll spend the time. I think of it as, and there's always exceptions to the rule, right? But I I think of that like, uh, it reminds me of like some of the baddest dudes that you meet that are, and girls too, that are fighters. Like if you're a really, really badass. so true. You're normally the most docile, nice going person. You know why? Because you're confident. Yeah, they don't need to prove anything. Yeah, and and when you're the buffest dude in the gym, you ain't got shit to prove. It's pretty obvious. (laughs) You know what? It's working. You know what though? With with fighters, it's not just the confidence. It's also that they know, you know, the damage that can happen. Happen in a fight, they right. respect that, it. Yeah, there's other I've, I've there's hung, other factors. I've hung out with some some fighters, yeah. uh, and and I remember going out and them getting insulted or pushed or whatever, and they're just like, but cool, I think I think cool, and I'm like, man, he could <laughs> wipe the floor oh, with you. It's, it's humility. Cool. It's humility, right? Yeah. They have that in common. That's what it is. They're they're both humble for whatever reasons. It's just you know, if you're somebody in the gym and you and you reach the this you know the biggest buffest person in there, that didn't happen overnight. Mm. You know, and and you can relate and remember what it was probably like first starting and frustrated and working mm-hmm. hard and knowing you have a long road ahead of you. And so I think you have compassion. Hey for man, that. What, yeah. what what got me in love with? Uh, well, I was always already in love with with working out, but what got me in love with the main lifts, or at least the first time I was really introduced to them as as being the most effective and experiencing them, was a group of powerlifters, older older gentlemen mm-hmm. who saw me doing leg press and you know uh, leg extensions and saw how hard I was working. And they helped me out, and and I could see that they that they looked at this. And I look, I would feel the same way now if I'm working out and I see some 16 year old kid over there just grinding and trying hard. I'm gonna look at the kid the same way they looked at me and be like, "Man, good for you! Here, let me point you in the right direction. You're wasting your time on this leg extension machine. Totally. Why don't you try barbell squatting? Watch did what you? Did, did any, I don't think any of us went to went back to a gym. It was a small window there that they were opened up. Do you? Do you guys know anybody that did? No, no I stopped by the Santa Cruz Power and kind of peeped in because my friend was uh, trying to work out there. And then uh, that was it, though. I mean, they had a few people in there at the time, but it was it, it was definitely a different. Uh, you got to find out for me because I heard they're staying open, dude. Because today everyone's supposed to be I closed. Hope they are. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to put them on blast. Yeah, or don't thing. call them out. Like yeah, that, but you know, like, I, <laughs> yeah, right, just put them on front street. You know, <laughs> like, that's the thing. Sorry. Like, I, uh, yeah. So uh, I, I, again, we'll, we'll see what happens with with this whole thing. Here, like, how many people are still going to try and make it work? Here's what I think is about to happen because it's get, it's been too long now. I think what's about to happen. Not that I'm encouraging this, but mm-hmm. this is you're going to start to see mass civil disobedience with people who are going to say. I'm sorry, I got to keep my business open, and uh, it, you know, I got to at least try to to make a living because it's been too long. Yeah. And when enough people start doing, you know, what it reminds me of this Dude, is this is a grand experiment. It just reminds me of the uh, of uh, um, uh, prohibition. Mm-hmm. Prohibition. One of the reasons why that got repealed was you because you remember that so well. No. No. It <laughs> reminds me of it reminds me of prohibition yeah. times. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Well, that's well, see. That was, Doug was in his twenties back then. Was <laughs> like that? Yeah. No, it, it, remi- it, it reminds it when I read about when I read about <laughs> prohibition <laughs> because it, when that happened, so many people did not follow that law. You had police officers going into you know these speakeasies, yeah. and yeah. you had so many that they basically are like we've made a bunch of normal people lawbreakers. And with these, you know, forced shutdowns with a lot of these businesses again in California, I can only imagine how many Dude, of them are speak easy doing gyms. Stuff. How cool is that? What if you got that where it's like you got to go down a basement and like you don't even know it's there? Yeah, not saying that this is a good idea. No, not just, promoting it. Well, let's just say I'm you had a secret it, handshake. It's a, it's a hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. a secret knock. It's a uh, fact. It's happening. I mean, I uh, we were off air. We were speculating right about this. Like, and uh, where my brain goes is I'm trying to think of like where okay, where's the opportunity? Right, there's going to be an opportunity that's going to present itself for business because. This is hap- It's already happening. What you're saying. It's not like it's going to ha- going to happen. It's already been happening. It's just going to ramp up. Yeah. yeah. There's already people doing, you know, haircuts undercover. There's already trainers still going to people's houses and training. Mm-hmm. There's still this is happening already. And if you if you keep things closed up for much longer, it's going to become survival mode. I mean, even the most responsible person that has got three, six months of income put aside, that's running low now. And you put a, you put those people in that corner long enough and there's still a demand for it from the market, people are going to figure well, out. Now, what I'm concerned about is, okay, now, now you do that. If it's black market, just like prohibition times, it's cash. 
and you're not claiming it for taxes. So what does that do for the economy when we start when all these people do start working but stop paying taxes? No, well, big tax short shortfall. Yeah. Well, here's what Our they do: the economy's not they, that great to well, begin with. They'll still tax you. They'll just do it differently. They'll just print more money. Yeah. So then you are getting taxed without getting taxed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're still going to get taxed that way. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of working out, I got a DM from someone. The other, I didn't even think about this. So uh, we you know, we work with a company, Magic Spoon, right? High protein cereal, uh, no sugar. And this guy sends me this this uh, picture, and he's like, "Best post workout meal of all time." You know, that's and so I'm, funny. I was thinking about that because uh, the whole slamming a shake after the workout is a post workout meal. I'm like, what's the difference in the macros? I was thinking about that too. Is like adding that instead. It's whey protein and milk protein isolate, so it's high quality. There's very little sugar. You, you put milk in there. You get a little bit of the sugar from the milk. Milk itself is actually a very good. Post well, I was going to say. So, there, yeah. remember when there was? Wasn't there a study that went around? There was the chocolate milk? Uh, yes. Yes, I did a post a long time ago. I want to say like four years ago. It's a deep in my my Instagram where I com I compared uh, post workout shakes to like a glass of chocolate milk. Yep, and they're and, and and they've done studies on this to show in terms of replenishing glycogen and muscle protein synthesis. And milk was excellent. Right. Yeah. So imagine milk in Magic Spoon is like the like ideal post workout. Plus it's convenient, right? Because it's in a box, so you just yeah. boop, get your bowl and it's smash, way tastier. Yeah. Sm smash some fruity some fruity cereal that's it, got protein in it. Now you still haven't had the peanut butter yet. You have you yet? Have you even? No, had, I haven't. So yet. neither one of you guys have had it no. yet. No. So you know what Magic Spoon is doing right I'm now too. Order it next. So I think Jackie messaged me. So they said, "Yo, oh, the Magic Spoon listening to their fans. So you can now create your variety box." Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So so before, yeah, yeah before that. that was, and that was kind of a knock that I had. It wasn't something I shared on the podcast, but it was something that I was like, damn, man, sometimes I wish I could just, I want this flavor and this flavor, and that's all I want. And uh -huh. like, even when I ordered peanut butter, I got honey nut also. So I got yeah. two peanut butter, two honey nut. And I'm like, the honey nut ones are, uh, they're good. They, they remind me of like, um, do you remember, uh, what was it called? Corn pops. Oh, that flavor. Pops. I love pops. Yeah, if you like that flavor, then you like really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. That wasn't that my, was my favorite. I didn't like that. Cereal. You don't like pops? No, I wasn't. Oh, a fan I love of that. pops. So you'll like that cereal then, because it reminds me of that flavor. It has that flavor to it. Huh. Uh, even though it's honey nut, uh, yeah. it, it tastes like it reminds me of like corn pops. Oh, dude, I was all about pops and uh, smacks. Honey smacks. Smacks are very similar with to the that. frog on yeah. it. Yeah. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, you know yeah. why else I like smacks? Yeah. This is why. I'm the oldest. Remember, I'm the oldest of four. You know how great it is early in the morning to wake up and ask your younger siblings if they'd like some smacks? <laughs> you know? Just, they say yes. You uh, know? Even back then, you were into dad jokes. <laughs> oh, you know? dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even as a kid. It was the greatest <laughs> yeah, of all time. Hey, you want some... You know, you're, yeah, my brother's all tired. <laughs> yeah, he's all tired in the morning. His hair's all disheveled. Yeah, I'll have yeah. some smacks. What's a capital of Thailand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh hey, speaking of DMs, I have to clear up. I, I love our listeners. I do. Especially when you check me. I know I'm, you're about to say something. Uh, that they, yeah, they, you, you they did. Wrong. Oh, like, I always do. Are you kidding me? Like, you know, I just... Shit flies out my mouth and then somebody has to, like... Yeah. You know, correct me. I, so. just, I just dodge it. I go, ah. So uh, Justin and I were talking about. We were, remember when we were talking about the coin shortage, and I was talking about all. I have a oh. five gallon, and you said, "Do you guys use the thing?" And I'm like, "Fuck no, they take too much money." Oh, the fee that they charge to put in those machines. Yeah, that so, yeah I've uh, used that at the grocery. store. Yeah, time. I offended somebody who has who has one of those machines. You said it was thirty percent. Yeah, the yeah, percentage? it's like seven percent. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was way that's off. A, that's, that's, a, a, that's a big difference. That's pretty, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of coin machine were you using? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, you got a highway robbed. I was getting jacked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember yeah. what it was. Adam, hey. Adam got closed by somebody. They're like, no, no, no. Listen, that machine it's charges fine. 30%. Yeah. I'll charge you 25%. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Adam's probably. like, okay. Yeah, great, was, great, great deal. Good. I got suckered. Bad. Thank you so much. I got suckered. Dude, so Justin, that, the, the BMX bike, right? Gave it to my, to my boy. Oh, you oh. already gave it to him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. what do you yeah. think? Liked it. Loved it, right? Sweet. So, we're, so I bring it home, and he's all excited, right? He already yeah. bailed, which was pretty funny. Oh, he's, nice. Yeah. I, yeah, it's already fell off of it, and I'm, I'm la he was okay, so I'm, but I'm laughing. I'm like, that's the first of many, so just get used oh, to it. Oh, yeah, that's part of it. But uh, I got on that thing, and uh, guess who can still bunny hop? No. Oh, yeah. no way. Yeah. Now, it's like three Old inches. Skills. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah, that much. Yeah. What yeah. I would pay to have a video of that. Why didn't you I send I have a that? video of it. You do? I do. Okay, we That would be excellent that. if you shared that uh, with It was us. the tiniest of bunny hops, but I got <laughs> the back tire off, and I remembered how to do it. Hey, hey, if you can't get up onto the curve, it doesn't count. Yeah, I could do I think... <laughs> I think if I practice, I'm gonna bring the the ramp in. I want to see your skills. Bro. No, no, no! Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna jump a ramp. What? It's not that, that's not that crazy. Oh man, I'm I, you know, I got old man bones. I'm yeah. gonna <laughs> <laughs> crack. Oh, hey, oh. you know another I'm thing that someone uh, DM me about of that we talked about. So we were talking about uh, the UFC fight and. 
the fans and how I told you just like it killed the, the excitement. Of, oh, because there were no fans? Yeah, there's no. Yeah. So I guess soccer is already doing that, like the laugh track version. I read about this. So basically, it, the Japanese company, what is it, Yamaha or uh, uh, what? not Yamaha? Motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 a Japanese company that, that basically created an app so you can, uh, the fans could uh, introduce noises and stuff like through speakers in empty stadiums. Well, wasn't it you who brought up the, uh, the company that was trying? Trying to start where you yeah, could uh, do a, a virtual version of it. You yes, could pay, pay the, tickets. The cutouts. Yeah, is it the same company or is it a different company? I think that's a different company. That's a different idea. Oh, so uh, when you're watching the game, then you hear all these speakers of fans that are yes. digitally screaming. So it is Yamaha. I'm not. I'm not smoking. Wow. Fire. Yeah, you're a good job. Remote Sweet. cheer app lets fans root for their teams. Okay, so is it cost money? Is it like a dollar and you get to be be in there or something? How does it well, work? Well, yeah, they're testing it right now, but I'm sure like yeah, they're going to have an app for it. So you pay for uh, each time that you're going to. Put your, Dude, your noise out hey, there. Please huh? tell me this is not okay. You got can, this is like, remember, we talked like two years ago or maybe longer about how I really think that like we're moving in the direction of the movie Surrogates. Do you mm. remember that? Oh, how the, we're yeah. like, you just the virtual world of everything and like you, people just love being plugged in more because it's virtual worlds yeah. better, you know? Right. I, tell me this is not a step in that direction where like we can start making cutouts of ourselves, virtual versions of ourselves at the events. You can do your, impose your voice at it and like yeah. you don't even go. You know what I'm saying? But you're there virtually. And then you have, remember the IG thing I told you about with well, the clothes just, that you could pretend that you have on? Like yeah. we are getting closer and well, closer every day. Well, think it makes sense right now, but like I think it's just a massive pivot just to try and gather any money they can. Well, you think, say that until... Yeah. People think it's cool. Well, think about it this way. Like, you've seen the True. comments of anonymous people on YouTube. Like, just disgusting, terrible, terrible people. Terrible people. I wonder if Chest. this is going to allow people... Thanks. <laughs> well, oh, I, my, even, I, wonder, my, I wonder if, well, if people are going to... Because they're doing it through an app and it's anonymous... What kind of cheers are they going to start saying? Exactly. Games, you know? like, <laughs> they starts getting all like weird and like Fuck horrible you. and racist. Fuck yeah. you. Well, you know? here, so uh, to a follow up to the whole cutout thing, uh, they actually caught somebody that had like like uh, Osama bin Laden. They put like in the sit stands See? and like all these like, <laughs> like like characters in history that were evil. Like they're putting them all over in there and planting it in of there. Of course, so they, they're like, oh, we got to screen this. That's better. exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah. that'll make it funny though. Don't you think mm -hmm. that'll be funny? I mean, I do. At but, some yeah, point, at too. some point, though, you're going to be like, "Come on, man! You're watching a game, and every, the whole crowd is chanting, you know, suck my yeah, dick or something right. like that." You know? yeah. Like, what the hell's going That's on? It's going to happen, Sal. Dude, Adam, yeah. going to happen. Adam, I wanted to yeah. tell you something. So, tell uh, me, Sal. some, some tell me. cannabis science coming out. Oh, okay. I'm read it for you. So, scientists uh, have identified a cannabinoid that they're now synthesizing and stabilizing. There's a process where they stabilize it. And it's going to be far more potent, uh, potent, uh, potent, <laughs> <laughs> sweetly. Yes, so, yeah, sweetly. Potent. It's going to be far more potent than traditional cannabinoids found in cannabis. Oh my god! For diseases like cancer, mm. uh, to help people with chemotherapy, irritable uh, bowel disease, and psoriasis. What? Yeah, because because they're finding that cannabinoids uh, may have some uh, some positive effects for psoriasis, but really only at high doses. But if but this particular version, you don't need to take super high doses, and it'll be a medicine. Huh. So years ago, you know, it's funny. Years ago, I did so much obsessive research on cannabinoids because I had a, a family member who had cancer, and they were terminal. There was nothing, nothing that you know traditional medicine could do. So I, I researched all these alternative treatments, and I stumbled upon a study. Uh, that was done in Spain uh, with uh, mice in cancer, and they found that THC uh, killed cancer at really, really high doses. So I went down this path of studying cannabinoids, invested in companies that uh, were making medicines based on cannabinoids because I knew the potential. Uh, this is exactly what I predicted, that they would – I didn't think that the natural cannabinoids would be powerful enough to be used for acute conditions. Mm. I know that cannabinoids are good for like long-term <laughs> chronic issues for some people, yeah. but for like – cancer and you know other types of diseases you probably need s super high concentrated doses or synthetic versions that are more targeted and i thought bad i bet you in the future they're gonna start figuring it's a whole new class of drugs so they made that's breakthroughs what's happening. with the synthetic uh, version huh? this what that's what they're they're talking about who's right the company now? that's wow. doing it uh i'll pull it up for you I, I, I believe it's a let me see i think it's an israeli company if i'm not if i'm not mistaken you know they're they're the leaders right now in, in cannabis research hmm. Yeah, Dr. Raphael McCullum, and I don't know where he's from, 
doesn't say. I'm going to find out uh, where, oh, it's a, uh, it's a global biotech company based in the U.S., uh, EPM. Interesting. We should oh, it's look, based here? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, so we should look this up. Yeah, and no. see what's going on. No, that's interesting. Very interesting. Really Here's some more uh, interesting science. So they did some studies on uh, birth control pills, and they found that uh, women who take oral contraceptives um, had significantly smaller hypothalamus volume, the part of the brain uh, called the hypothalamus, and women who took oral contraceptives uh, was much smaller, and they believe that this can lead to more depressive and anger Symptoms, hmm. so it definitely affects the structure. More Jolene Brighton information in the in the brain, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a uh, very interesting stuff. But of course, it makes sense, right? The hypothalamus controls certain hormones, so if you're taking a hormone from the outside, um, then you know it should definitely have that. What's that called? I, that negative feedback loop or whatever. Right. I got some for you. It has nothing to do with science that I thought was really interesting to me. Did you know that there is a single person, a single company, who has monopolized all the luggage that we lose? And has turned it into a massive business. What? Since like, I, th- I want to say- What do you mean a single Of course. Course. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, uh, airlines lose uh, collectively uh, billions of dollars a year, on, on, uh, billions of dollars a year. Sorry, both of us here can't yeah, speak I don't know today. What's going on. Yeah, uh, a year on lost luggage. So you, you know, you have like, when we, we fly, like it's insured by a certain amount, you have that option to insure like your luggage and then- if it if you if the airline loses it, they reimburse you x amount x amount of dollars, mm-hmm. and so lost luggage happens all the time. Mm-hmm. So, so they just hold it in a, like some kind. So of they so they hold it in a warehouse? facility, yeah, in a warehouse for months. You know, I think I, I want to say thirty or sixty days is something they after they've tried to find who has it, and then once that's done, then they auction it off, like how storage units mm-hmm. get sold. But one person started that, and it all goes to him, his company. And so, Whoa. yes, and then he turns around and, and then resells it. What a smart! What I a know. Part. Does he sell it like those storage uh, Constant containers? Constant supply. No, no, no. You can go shop it. So there's a. I, I forget where the store is <laughs> so at. Weird. So yeah. maybe maybe Doug can look up luggage resell business. <laughs> so it's a store. It's this one store. It's, it's all a, clothes and vibrators. I, it's. it's, <laughs> it's too, like it's what too, else is there gonna be in there? Yeah. yeah the, exactly. No, I mean, yeah. There's gonna be a lot of. I mean, it, so it's it's unseen. Like he pays he pays by the weight, right? Like you know. 4,000 pounds of, uh, you know, luggage costs X amount of dollars and you just buy, just like storage units, right? They don't get to see what's inside of it. You just, you bid on it and that's what you get it for. Yeah. But I mean, he's not bidding against anybody. Hmm. So, I mean, he's he's negotiated his, wow. his, his prices and his deals. And this has been going on since like, I want to say late 60s or early 70s. I wonder how many drugs they find. So okay, that gets turned over. So they talk. So about they take the narcotics. R- anything there. that anything illegal that gets found like that, or yeah, even no, nobody's skimming off those, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we we found kickbacks. we found traces of cocaine. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, 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 yeah. we, we spilled half, it. Yeah. yeah. We spilled it. <laughs> we found a half kilo in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's all over your shirt? Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. yeah Look at the nation's only retailer of lost luggage. Dude. How weird. I know. Where is it located? It's in the middle of America somewhere. I'd love, say, I'd, Dev- I, I'd love to go shopping there. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. But. Alabama. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, he's probably killing it. Mm. Of course. If you have the you have a monopoly. You're the wow. only every well, and, how does he monopoly? Hold on a second. Monopolies don't exist unless there's laws that say that other companies can't do this. So I'm assuming that the the, the airlines have made an exclusive deal with him. Right. And no other okay. Yeah, like, yeah. In mm. contract, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no, I think it's crazy. Did I ever tell you about the time that I almost, my mom almost beat me in the uh, at the airport? This reminds me of that. Yeah. <laughs> beat you in the yeah. airport. Yeah. I almost uh, got a beat down in the airport. With, we were with her shoe. Yeah, what? I almost got hit with the shoe. We were uh, tra- We were leaving Italy, and I was twelve. And when I was in Italy with my cousin, we bought these cap guns that were made out of metal. Oh no! This is, by, this is before. Oh, oh the, my God! Running around is, an airport with bro, cap guns. Hold on a second. <laughs> so, oh man! Imagine today. That well, imagine today. I, that's what I'm trying to explain. So people don't understand this. In the in the mid '90s, you know, you were a kid. You could buy a, a toy gun mm-hmm. that looked like a gun and was metal. Like yeah. it, it was literally felt and I looked had one. like a gun, mm-hmm. right? Then the only thing that made it maybe maybe you think it was not a gun would maybe be a little orange like no tip thing that, that did not come on till till we got older. Well, as a kid, the ours did not have an orange the yellow tip. Well, neither or did the orange. Tip. Neither did mine. So yeah. Sometimes they did. 
but mine didn't. Yeah, it, not or you late. take it off. Which no, is that I did not come. That did not. You guys don't remember. I remember when that that happened. When I was playing guns, when I was real little. None of them had that. Mm. As I started to get older, that was like, and I remember being a kid. Maybe they gave like, you a real gun to play with when you were that's yeah. stupid. Like, this is no. Stupid. Is you orange? remember that, Doug? You remember that, right? Yeah, I, know I remember sure. that. Yeah, it was. They we did not have the orange tip. That was a that was a law that was passed. I, I want to say in the nineties, late nineties, yeah, when that yeah. happened. So it was a metal cap gun that looked just like a revolver. <laughs> And I packed it in my suitcase. And this is the first time I ever packed my own luggage. You know, my my mom's like, pack your own luggage. How have like, I not heard this story before? Bro, oh, it goes wow. it goes through and the thing goes off and the security over there is like you know, around my parents. And my mom's like, what, 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 what? And and, and they're like, do you, what do you have in your luggage? And she's like, clothes? I don't know, nothing. And I think my parents <laughs> I'm gonna call them out. I think my parents thought for a second that they were going to get in trouble for smuggling like salamis and shit because you (laughs) (laughs) importing. You're not supposed to do that, right? But I think they had like cheeses and salamis and stuff, so I could tell like the panic, you know, on their face, like like, oh fuck, they caught us, you know. And then they pulled out my cap gun, and the look my mom gave me, I was like, oh. Thank you, yeah. God, for putting me it in public right now. Kill. If I was not in public, this would be bad, oh <laughs> bad right now. God. That's hilarious. I remember vividly, too, like they used to have all those signs of like what was not acceptable to bring in. Yeah. And they, so they had like, of course, the guns, like knives, but then there was like hammers and there was a fucking chainsaw. Like somebody, <laughs> like I'm like, a chainsaw? Like, yeah. you know, somebody had to have gone through there with a chainsaw, a chainsaw. for them to even put them on there. Yep. You know, it's so crazy, dude. That's so funny. You know what else was, I was thinking about? I was driving back from, from Truckee when we were coming back from the house and I was in traffic and I was like, what? Okay. There was all these people like taking the, the turn to get off at this one place where there was fields of these sunflowers. I have never seen like hundreds of people at once taking selfies in front of these sunflowers. I was like, is this a thing? Is this a new thing? Like people like, it, it was like a, a status thing or all of a sudden. But you, you, the selfie thing's kind of weird when you think about it, right? Like, it's extremely does anybody weird. Put, Do you does remember, anybody put pictures I've never of seen that before, dude. I was just like, up, like amazed at how many people were well, doing it. Well, that's like the, the, the ice cream business thing that I brought up in San Francisco, the ice cream museum. Like it was literally built. For, for selfies. That, for, for selfies. That's the reason why, it, and it's and it blew up because of that. That's yeah. so weird. Yeah, 100%. 1992. So See, then that? it came out with Apparently. the orange gun. The orange gun did not come out so until 1992. So when were you playing with guns? How old were you? Uh, oh, you mean at, at 92 mm-hmm. for to remember yeah. that? Uh, that would I was 81, so 12, 11. Nice try. You no, were trying no, to no, fuck no, with no. me. Oh, oh, yeah. So, no, no, I'm not yeah, trying to screw yeah, him. He's trying to be like, you. he was 18. <laughs> 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 oh, so you were 18 when you were still playing with toy guns at him? You remember that? You didn't get me this time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice try, guy. I was like 11, okay? I was 11. I remember that transition because it was cool in you know 90, but it was not so cool in 90. I remember, I remember being pissed. Yeah. I remember this is stupid. That was half of the fun was that it felt Bro, real. You know, I, even the, when, when the airsoft guns came out, like the first round of them, they didn't have the distinction that they were like airsoft guns. They looked like legit like assault dude, rifles and sniper dude, rifles. my cousin had a machine gun cap gun, and it literally was a machine gun <laughs> cap gun. And it looked like a machine That's crazy. gun. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So cool. <clears throat> first question is from Acorn Bluth. Why do I suck at pull-ups? <laughs> so does Justin ask him. Hey, yeah. man. No, he's, he's pretty good. I'm all right. Um, no, I, I do suck at pull-ups. We pull should ups. talk about ways to get better at pull-ups. This is a very common. Very common. Yeah, people yeah. are always asking me pull-ups how do I get hard. better. They are pull-ups very are hard. Pull-ups are hard. Um, you obviously need to be really strong, but you need to have good strength to weight ratio. This is important because... You could be really strong, but you could also weigh 240 pounds, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's going to be much more difficult than, you know, even if you're not as strong, but you weigh 150 pounds. Is that strength strength to weight ratio? This thing is why on? it was so impressive. Do you guys remember Robert Oberst doing pull ups? He did like four in a row or something. Yeah. I, I was just, my, my head almost exploded. Yeah, because that's a big dude. He's right? huge. Yeah. yeah. So, some of the best ways you can get strong at pull ups um, number one, this is the best, this is one of the best techniques you could do to improving your pull ups. Let's say you could do, you know, a couple. You want to get better at them, but you're only good enough to get, you know, or strong enough to get two. Every day throughout the day, maybe three times a day, just do one. Do one pull up. Walk by a pull up bar, do one pull up bar, and oh, excuse me, one pull up, and then go about your day. And then maybe later in the day, do the same thing. Yeah. Practice the skill of doing a pull up. And, and by the way, when you're practicing the skill, that does not mean you're treating it like a workout necessarily. 
You're not, you know, trying to get a workout with the pull-up. You're just practicing the pull-up every once in a while or every time you pass by the pull-up bar. I had a, a, a female client years ago who this was her goal. Her goal was to be able to do six pull-ups. This was like a big thing for her. And this is what I did. I said, okay, put up a pull-up bar in your house, in your bedroom, in the door frame or whatever. And every time you walk by the door, uh, just do one. Just jump up, do one pull-up and leave. Within a matter of, I think it was a very short period of time, like within a matter of like two months, she went from being able to do three pull-ups to being able to do six pull-ups yeah. in a two-month period. It's such an effective strategy. And this is what I, I know you brought this example up with somebody else, but I used to use this uh, same same technique for, for benching. And I would just come in and I would bench and I would do one rep and then I would put it back and just get my body acclimated to the amount of weight and the load. And it's great because you're not under any fatigue. Like my bo- I'm just literally working on the strength and the recruitment of it and teaching my body, you know, how much force output to, to provide. And, you know, we, we get to the endurance part later. So you want to do multiple reps, you know, that comes after you, you, you establish what kind of strength requirement it, your body needs to, to be able to pull this off. Well, to that point, have you guys, this is, this is less <clears throat> less convenient for somebody who's in a gym, but more convenient for somebody who has a home gym. Have you ever gone over and pulled four or five hundred pounds for a single single two or three times? You know, like do one single rest, do another single rest, and then go over and go do pull up. Oh yeah, oh man, you yeah. fly up the You're, bar. Yeah, yeah, Just you, like it's like priming your CNS. Oh yeah. yeah, you if you can deadlift, you know. Uh, more than you weigh, especially if you can do it significantly more, you know, three, four, five hundred pounds, and do a couple sets of singles. You know, don't try to go to fatigue or go to maxing out, but go to a heavy load, 80 percent plus of, of of your max, and do some singles uh, a couple times, and then go over and do uh, pull ups, mm-hmm. and you just fly up the bar. Yep. So that's to that kind of point. Well, and then the other P-A-P thing that <clears throat> I made the mistake early on when I was a, a, a trainer trying to get good at pull ups. And uh, my strategy was, you know, before the workout, I would, you know, I'd start off with as many as I could get. You know, it was like, and back when I very, very first started, it was like seven. You know, it was it was a, it was hard. And you know, and then I would get up to eight, then I get to nine, then I get to ten. I kept doing that, and to eventually to where I, could, I think I had the most I ever got was twenty something pull ups, around twenty five, I think, is about where I maxed out for the total amount that I could ever do in a row. And that took a long time to get there. It wasn't until way later did I ever mess with loading uh, my pull up really heavy and just doing one or two and I actually shot up oh, yeah. way faster doing that and got way stronger doing pull ups by doing singles doubles and triples of really as heavy as I could to to do uh to only get out a couple than I was by just trying to add a rep or two mm-hmm. uh, to it. That was a much better strategy for getting good at pull-ups yep. than just doing reps. Some other things you can do, let's say that even doing one pull-up is difficult for you. Um, use a resistance band, tie it around the, the, the pull-up bar so that it hangs down, stick your foot in it or your knee in it, depending yep. on how long the band is, so now it's kind of partially supporting or your weight. Or bring it over the J-hooks and put it low enough to where you can you can set it up that way That's well. the, That's how I like to do it yep. usually. But this way isn't just if you have a pull-up bar, right? Put right. it on the bar, step in it. Now it's assisting you. Now you could do assisted pull-ups. Here's the other way. You could literally get a box or something, a step ladder or something like that, get up to the pull-up bar so that it looks like you finished the pull-up, hold on to the bar, and then lower your body weight down slowly and yeah. just practice that. Do some negatives. Practice negatives. But frequent practice at sub max intensity um, will get you there faster than just doing hard pull ups, you know, once a week. Next question is from Lamar Second. I think training biceps is the most boring thing to do in the gym. (laughs) Amen, brother. (laughs) It's Justin for sure. (laughs) Do you have any advice on how to keep bicep training fun and interesting? I cannot relate to this. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I cannot relate to this at all. I have no tips because I'm still (laughs) like with this guy. Never skipped bicep. (laughs) So, so, okay, so here's something for you, okay? You don't like bicep training. It's boring. I get what you're talking about. Bicep training, it's a lot of isolation, single joint movements. You sound like somebody who enjoys doing the challenging functional movements or the big compound lifts. Mm -hmm. Here's the truth, okay? If you're doing heavy pulls, heavy cleans, heavy rows, heavy pull-ups. You really really don't need much of it. Yeah, you don't need to do too much, you know, bicep work. You really don't. I mean, just sprinkle it in there. Yeah, Yeah. heavy high pulls. Like, okay, the program we have on sale this month is MAP Strong, right? It's half off. In that program, there's a snatch grip high pull. 
uh, that'll hammer your biceps. That's mm -hmm. going to give you great results for your biceps. In fact, as a kid, I noticed my biceps got better results from doing movements like that than from doing the, uh, the you know, curls and all the isolation exercises. So that's one thing you could do is, is you don't necessarily need to do specific bicep work. It, just throw in more heavy pulling work. Here's the other thing you can do, okay? Have some fun uh, doing heavy strength training with biceps. Now, I don't recommend this to everybody, but you can do this if, if you're bored. Uh, a hammer curl is a great exercise you could do with one arm where you're kind of practicing, no joke, singles and doubles. You know, arm wrestlers do this. This is a, a favorite exercise among arm wrestlers where they grab a heavy dumbbell and they'll do one heavy curl and let it go down real slow and they'll practice doing singles like they're practicing a deadlift or a squat. That stuff is a lot of fun. You, d you do not, uh, you know, and I was joking that I can't relate or answer for you, but you, you do not need to do bicep curls. Uh, if you were somebody who, if you were doing pull-ups and you're deadlifting, you're doing snatch, I mean, if you were doing all those exercises, yeah, supinated rows, them, the, them biceps are getting worked. They are not getting neglected whatsoever. Now, if you said to me, Adam, I, I, I want better biceps and you don't like your bicep development. And then you're also asking, I hate training them. Okay. Well, that's a different conversation. But if you're doing bicep curls just because you think that you need to do bicep curls or maybe you're following even one of our programs and it has bicep curls in it, but you're doing everything else, you don't, you don't have to. That's, that's another thing too. It's like when we talk like the, the programs since day one, right? When we created them were with the intent to mold them to you, right? Like it's the idea was to give people a very solid blueprint that if you followed it to a T, you're fine, you're set. But if you have things that are that you care about or you don't care about, to customize. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you were following a program like Maps Aesthetic or Maps Anabolic and and where there's bicep curls in there and you're already doing a lot of pull-ups, deadlifting, and you'd rather do maybe abs inserted in there instead or do another set of getting better at perfecting your squat or doing some more prime mobility work because you know you need that, uh, you know, or, you know, doing adding, you know, carries in there because that's not an anabolic. I mean, shit, do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do it. Don't don't stress having to do bicep curls. That's not a, that's not a, a, a necessary thing to do. If you are doing good back exercises, buys are getting a good workout. Well, we never really talk about some of these unconventional lifts because it's, it's very – you're not going to find them in the gym. Like uh, it's something that's like not commonly like seen and, and that's with working with ropes. And so I, I've done rope climbs and I've also done uh, you know, rope pulls where I'm, I'm in a seated position and I'm pulling the rope uh, and I'm doing that over like, you know, a certain amount of time. And man, if you want to talk about like frying your arms and your biceps and, and, and your grip and everything else, it's, it's a really challenging exercise and a lot of fun too so i mean yeah. there's there's ways you can get creative with this so uh you know i i tend to be the one like the, probably the one that gets most creative because i hate bicep curls i think it's fucking it's it's boring and, and it's mm. it's it's a slow death for me but um you know it, it, there's lots of ways around it yeah well okay so here's your evidence if you you know you think oh man you know it's boring but i have to do it and but i do do lots of heavy pull-ups and pulls and stuff like that like what's going to happen the athletes with the best biceps you'll ever find anywhere, besides gymnasts. bodybuilders, right? gymnasts. Yeah, Bi besides bodybuilders and, and people lift weights, gymnasts. And they look, don't ever do a bicep curl. No, look at a male gymnast arms and bite. Now I know there's a there's a bit of a, a bias because they're probably genetically gifted. Doesn't matter though. You could tell their biceps are way more developed than uh, than any other athletes because of all the pull ups and ring work that they do. Oh, yeah. They don't do curls. I mean, I know gymnasts that some of them do some curls here and there. But that's not a staple. No, their, their staple muscles are in such a state of tension, trying to keep stability that uh, the the contraction there in all those muscles that it requires is insane. Most insane biceps I've ever seen in my yeah. life was a trainer that worked for me who had done year was a was a gymnast for years and years and years. He had the most insane looking arms, and I, I remember asking him like, you know, how often do you do curls? Like, what's the deal? And he goes, I, I rarely ever do them. I actually don't do them that often. But he did pull ups all the time. You're right. Next question is from Emoy5. 
What are some of the best workout tips for using resistance bands? Don't allow the bands to sit in the sun and dry out. Mm. Ooh, what happened to you? That's a good one. <laughs> Did they snap on you or what? <laughs> I think everybody's had a yeah. band snap or on them once. Or don't let your trainer uh, put it around you and then have you run with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. always uh, go, uh, yeah, yeah. ends. In have you guys ever smacked a client with the with the Dude, broken it, band? Yes. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, it, it came way. back actually. I was I was doing that as as a trainer and it it broke, but it got me. So it came back and it hit me in the ribs. I had like the biggest Welton bruise uh, for a couple weeks. Dude, I, I I hit one of my older male clients right in the pills. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, right in the mm. pills. Hard. Uh, Last time he resigned. Poor guy. No, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped after that. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, um, it's funny. The, the funny thing about resistance bands, this is very interesting. Um, you know, we have a bit of a unique perspective because we've been in the fitness space uh, professionally, in the gym space for, for two decades or over two decades, right? So you see trends and what becomes favorable and unfavorable. And I bands probably, I can't think of another tool that went from uh, nobody respected at all to becoming extremely valuable in a relatively mm -hmm. short period of time. When I first started working out, you you couldn't you wouldn't catch a single lifter mm -hmm. using bands. If they did, they would be made fun of for the rest of your lives. Was it Westside Barbell that popularized them? They yes, yeah. it, it, powerlifting um, coaches were the ones that started po started popularizing bands because well, what happened was a lot of these coaches were studying the the lifting techniques uh, and workout programs of Eastern Bloc uh, lifters, uh, former Soviet Union uh, nations. Um, and remember when the when the Iron Curtain came down, all of their information became available to us. And these countries had like funding, massive funding from the the their, their communist regime because it was a source of pride, right? That their athletes you know did stuff. So they 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 studied all kinds of different lifting techniques. And one thing that they discovered was variable resistance mm -hmm. was extremely effective at building strength. A very, very effective at building strength. Because it mimics the strength curve. It mimics the strength curve. So what I'm talking about is, and, and, and our coaches over here saw this, read this, and the smart ones applied it, and then you know they became dominant. So a, a strength curve is this, right? When you're doing a squat, for example, you're not the same strength throughout the whole squat. Most of us are strongest at the top of the squat and weakest at the bottom of a squat. So imagine when you're doing a heavy squat, uh, where are you most likely to, to, to not be able to lift the weight? Where are you most likely to be able to lift the most amount of weight, right? At the top, you're the strongest. At the bottom, you're the weakest. Now, the problem with free weights uh, or most machines or any other piece of equipment is that the the equipment's, excuse me, the resistance is pretty consistent. So if I'm squatting 300 pounds, whether I'm at the top of the squat or the bottom of the squat, it's 300 pounds. What a band does when I attach bands to the side of the bar and attach them down to an anchor. So let's say I tie them yeah, to the squat at the rack at the bottom, up at the, so they're on the barbell and they're at the bottom of the squat rack. What a band does is it gives you more resistance at the top and less resistance at the bottom. Because when you have a band, the further you stretch it out, the harder the resistance becomes. And the, the, when it's barely stretched out, the resistance is very easily, uh, excuse me, very easy. So when you're squatting with bands, now you have 300 pounds on the bar, but you have, let's say, an additional 100 pounds of resistance at the top mm -hmm. of the squat, but at the bottom, it's only maybe 20 pounds yeah. of resistance. And it gradually increases, so you're, it's not like a, a, a huge uh, demand all at once. No, and this resistance trains your muscles through uh, their natural strength curve, and it's, tr it's incredible for strength gains. That's my second favorite way to use resistance bands. My first favorite way is with a trigger session. Uh, trigger sessions work, they actually work better with bands than they do with weights. I think it's because bands don't cause as much damage to mm -hmm. muscle. Mm -hmm. And a trigger session, you'll find that in MAPS Anabolic, but for those of you who don't have the program, here's how you can apply uh, a trigger session. Get yourself a pair of bands. On your days off, do light exercises and movements for about 10 minutes, two or three times during the day, for maybe three or four of your target body parts. So let's say it's your sh your shoulders, your triceps, your biceps, uh, and your back. Um, so you're going to do band exercises for each of those, get a little bit of a pump, and just send a small muscle building signal. But really what you're doing is you're facilitating recovery, um, improving mobility, improving blood flow, and it turbocharges the results you get from your workouts. That's my favorite way to do it. Speaking of, are we, are we sold out still? Do you know? I don't know. 
I, I haven't seen a box come through in a while from uh, our bands. Are, do we have them? I haven't seen this come through. As soon as we list them, they're gone. No, I know. It's been crazy right now. I, I the, My favorite part about Resistance Band is just the convenience of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody who's been training in a gym long enough uh, knows that like when you're inside of a gym, one of the most versatile machines out there are the cable machines. Uh, you know, because you can move the the anchoring point, and you can move your body con contours to your body, and so you could do all these great. You could do a full body extra routine with one cable machine, like or a free motion machine, really well. Uh, good bands are the same way, mm -hmm. yeah. especially if you. have, I mean, the ones that we sell have like the different anchor points that I could put at the bottom of a door, the side of a door, the top of the door. And so I can create all kinds of different angles, and I could do a full body routine, and I could carry it around in this little pouch. So I, I love it for that. Like, of course, what Sal's saying uh, for my advanced lifters or listeners, I think uh, bands and chains are great tools to break through plateaus and to uh, in improve strength gains. Uh, but for the masses and for most people, I just think it's one of those things that you should you should have. Like everybody should just have a set of like good band, like a basic set of bands for that time that you're going to work out inside a hotel or mm -hmm. that time you're going to be at a park or that time that you're just going to, you want to get a little bit of exercise in and you can get a really nice yeah. workout. Yeah, I really got into bands. Uh, I was thinking back when I was in college and I there was a, a physical therapy um, a clinic like uh, on site and uh, you know after after workouts I would kind of go in there and, and and discuss things with them and they they would work all with rubber bands they, they would treat everybody's rubber bands they were fantastic for rehabilitation uh, you know exercises and that's when I started actually using them a lot more and started to actually superset them you know in combo with with dumbbells or barbells and I saw some some pretty awesome gains as a result from yeah I, I I love bands I, I discovered them not that long ago uh, maybe you know I, I want to say eight years ago uh, it's actually a long time ago but you know <laughs> I've been working out for so long it seems like it was recent and ever since I discovered them, they were like, they were, they were game changers. Adam, do you remember one of the first, maybe the first workout you and I ever had together? Do you remember you came to my studio, my wellness facility, and you and I did a deadlift yeah, workout don't get together? get this wrong, Sal. So we'll be uh, crushed. Yeah, no, no, no. I, have, I have I have video of that. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't anchored. show me because we were all jacked. I know. Was, was all, all, I think I was like, we were banded up on like 315 and I was pulling it like it was butter. Yeah. yeah so yeah, so what I was going to say is, here's another, this is an advanced tip. So if you're a beginner, intermediate, this probably won't benefit you. But if you're an advanced lifter, this is brilliant. Another good thing about the band is I can change where it's pulling from to emphasize different uh, different angles of a lift. So I'll give you an example. So Adam and I, we were doing deadlifts mm -hmm. that day together. Now, one of the things about a deadlift is you have to, you want to be able to pull back. You want to create the force that you're trying to create with the deadlift is not just to lift the weight up, but rather to kind of lift it back at the same time. Lock out. To lock it out. So what we did is we attached the bands to the bar in and then front it, in front of us mm -hmm. on the on the on the cage. That way we have to really emphasize that pullback at the top. You do a few sets of that and then take the bands off. Watch your form. It primes that movement and gives you better technique with your lift. You could do this with a lot of different exercises. Right. All right. Next question is from Captain Tanya BC. What are your suggestions for building bone health and strength? What do you suggest for people with osteopenia who are progressing towards osteoporosis? I know resistance training is great for this, but is there a certain way to approach it when you've got one or both of these? You probably dealt with this a lot, Sal. I yeah? did. Mm -hmm. I actually, one client in particular, I, I, I trained quite a few clients uh, in osteopenia and osteoporosis towards the end of my career. Um, I had some uh, a lot of doctor clients, and then they would refer, refer patients to me. One lady that I trained, um, she had osteopenia, and she was on treatments for it. They would give her, um, you know, very very harsh medication to try and reverse this because her bone loss was happening pretty quickly. Now the thing was, she was already active. She did lots of walking, and she ate a pretty healthy diet. She did not lift weights though, so she hires me because someone tells her that lifting weights uh, will help uh, build bone, and we did. We started lifting weights. And her doctor would annually, you know, or, or biannually measure her bone density. They were so blown away by the, 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 not only just stopping the bone loss, but actually the reversal of it. They were so blown away by it that the doctor actually uh, did a case study on her and had me write some stuff that he could, you know, present. I don't remember where he was presenting it, but as, uh, you know, basically to say that resistance training was 
just remarkably effective. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about lifting weights uh, or just resistance training in particular. You know, we think of it as building muscle. It's a bone builder mm -hmm. just as much as it's a muscle builder. Yeah. Just as much. I remember this with Dr. Spina kind of has this whole like presentation about how each one of these tissues, whether it's ligaments, whether it's, uh, you know, muscle tissue, whether it's bone, they, they all interact with each other and, and force is, is the communication between it all. So it's really applying the right amount, uh, that affects the, you know, all these tissues, uh, together. Yes. So, um, because muscle anchors on bone as muscle strengthens and pulls harder, Bone just strengthens. Nothing, nothing is more effective than resistance training for strengthening bone. If you have osteopenia, osteoporosis, there isn't a single thing you can do uh, that will that will help you more effectively. That's natural uh, than resistance training. In fact, I don't think there's any medication that will even come close um, as well. Now the question is, how do I do this? Uh, heavy, heavy weight, heavy weight training is the best way. Now it has to be appropriate. Right. So good form. Right. Heavy for a 70-year-old. You got to keep that in mind. Like people hear heavy and they think, oh, okay. No, it's all relative. Right. Yeah. It's all relative. So, but, but the, in other words, you need to do traditional strength training, not circuits, not hit training, not anything like that, but like yeah. seven, eight reps of a squat or a With deadlift. Proper rest periods. Yeah. For recovery. Yes. Now the best exercises for this, all resistance training exercises are good. But the best ones are the ones that load the entire body and the spine. Barbell squat, barbell deadlift, overhead press. I, you know what I think of? Carries. Carries are really mm -hmm. good, Carries too. for someone like this, I think, is just tremendous. Mm -hmm. I mean, walking is such a fundamental thing we should be doing anyways. It's an easy thing to progressively overload with a, with a client that's advanced age. It's like, I could start her off with just carrying 20-pound dumbbells in her hand, and that could be a load for her that she's not used to, and then slowly work up to a trap bar and adding weight to it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I've always loved about the, the carries when we got into them was that you just feel that from the neck down and that what that is the reason why the, the the bones are growing that's an it's an adaptation response to the stress you're getting yeah. the bones are being stressed that the, you're carrying a heavy load so they're going to get thicker and more dense to support that and so doing exercises that are loading the body and like to your point mm -hmm. yeah that are from head to toe and i i think farmer carries is a is a, a must in, inside there and it's teaching a, a 70 year old how to perform a squat if they've never learned how to do it is could be really difficult. Well, right? I'll, I'll and, tell you, I'll tell you about this lady, right? So she was in her late sixties, never had resistance trained before, and it, you know, you, you always want to train appropriate. Okay, so again, it's all relative. But w when we started, literally the lower body exercise we started with, uh, I would have her hold on to the squat rack with one hand, get into a split stance like she's doing a lunge. I put a pad underneath her. She would kneel down on the pad and then stand back up. So it's like a modified lunge. And we, I wouldn't have her do very many. She wasn't very strong when we started. By the end of, I want to say, a year and a half of training, she was doing barbell squats with a 30-pound barbell on her back. So not a lot, but way better. I mean, way stronger than she was before. She was deadlifting 90 pounds, That's which really is good. significant, right, off the ground. She was a, a, a small, petite lady, too. Overhead pressing the 12-pound dumbbells. We were bench pressing with a 30-pound barbell. We were barbell rowing with, I think, 30 pounds, something like that. So we were we had progressed to all these movements. She had gotten strong with them. And again, it, it, the doctor was so shocked because there's a point when you get into when, – from when osteopenia becomes osteoporosis – and the best that they can hope for is like stopping it. Yeah. This is what they kind of like slowing oh, it down. Slowing it down. She not only did she stop it, she started she, she started reversing to the point where we were getting to the point where the doctor was almost going to take her off that classification mm. and say you no longer have. Uh, and that's a that's a apparently that's a tough thing or a rare thing for them to see. Now what uh, it, what medication would they prescribe? Say you're in that situation. I think she was on Fosamax. I want to say I uh -huh. think that's the name. God, how do you remember that? Yeah, I don't know. God, you're I such a no dork. That's why I asked because I, I know, figured I you know that. It's like, <laughs> and I train those clients too. Maybe not as many as you do, but gee, the fact that you would remember the medication that they take. Yeah, right? that, that that is what it was. It was Fosamax. It's a I, stupid gift. Yeah, and the side effects are. I mean. They get a lot of side effects from it and stuff, which Superpower. is superpower. Yeah, it which is, is stop. It is, which is super. Here's the other thing with the fucking medication. Stop. Remember, stop. I can I can't, I can't even remember the medication I had to take. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that you take every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I always take less than I should. Yeah, you know I mean, but you know, here's the other thing with let's talk about diet for a second. Um, so long as you don't have any nutrient deficiencies, because um, I guarantee if you have osteopenia, I'm sure they're checking your vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're checking your calcium levels. 
if all of your nutrients, your micronutrients are okay, then what you want to do is you want to eat a diet that's best for building muscle. Okay, so I know a high protein diet, for example, has not been shown in literature to build bone or strengthen bone. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. What we want to do is we want to feed the body that gets the, in a way that builds the most strength in the muscle because it's the pulling of the muscle that anchors on the bone that causes the bone to get. So I put, I had her eat. Uh, she was eating, and this she was a uh, she did not like meat when we first started training, but over mm -hmm. time she started to to appreciate it. We, I had her eating about 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Um, she was eating a traditional muscle building diet. I feel like that was a big part That's of it. That's such as well. a good point. Yeah. This is another example of like when science misses the mark, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're studying when we we tend to isolate things like bone, right? right? Be like, oh, if you increase your protein one to one gram, it doesn't do anything for the bones. No, but you can't. You can't factor in that, or you're not factoring in that person also ended up building five or 10 more pounds of muscle, which building 10 more pounds of muscle did actually respond. Yes, because it's a, because muscles are the ones that are lifting the weights, and the more weight you can lift, the more the bone needs to adapt to support that. So you want to eat a diet that makes your muscles as strong as possible if you want to strengthen your bone, and, and that's just like the diet we always talk about, which is a high-protein diet balanced with carbs and with fats. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. What's up, everybody on YouTube? Go to Mind Pump Podcast. Come check us out. You can also find us on Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, you probably shouldn't even be on there. You're wasting your time. Yeah, why? Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Movements before gave me like this great pump and prime oh really before i went into bench and i had an incredible bench were you able to get 135 up finally <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> five times though five times <laughs> oh wow it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. a new record yeah, for you that's four reps more than last yeah time. you know Impressive. but i just it, it, i wasn't doing it with those intentions right